powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. Many of us breathing a sigh of relief that fires have not yet threatened our land and homes this season. But forecasters and fire experts say don't get too comfortable. Montana fire season is far from over. Our biggest reminder, 12 active fires burning tonight in western Montana. With a recent dip in hot temperatures and record snow and rainfall this year, Billings is experiencing a lull in its fire season, but that doesn't mean our firefighters are not working. Those with the Bureau of Land Management say all that record snowfall this winter and our overly wet spring did help keep our fuels green and resistant to fire. Still, research shows fire seasons across Montana and the country last longer and become more extreme each year, forcing our local firefighters to travel for work. They're still out working. Um, we've got some more people are on their way out to, uh, uh, to assignments now. People just coming back in. A lot of our fire qualified personnel haven't spent a lot of time home this summer. They've been out doing their job. It's just that they've been needed elsewhere rather than at home this year. Even though we saw quite a cool down in the recent days, warmer weather, low humidity and gusty winds are on the way. Now this means stage one fire restrictions will stay in place into and through Labor Day weekend. Turning to Q2 meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Ed, just because we're in a lull, we are not in the clear. No, and in fact, we're going to continue to watch very carefully for the development of wildfires. And as you mentioned, they become a lot more frequent and uh, across the uh, state of Montana in particular, we've watched this upward trend since the 1970s. The number of large fires continuing to increase during that period. But it isn't just that we have more fires burning at one time, but rather a longer wildfire season. In the early 70s, the average was about five months. Now over seven months is the average fire season. So more than half the year. The good news is as we start sliding into this evening though is we've got very good conditions across the region. There are still some fires burning in western Montana, but take a look at our air quality map. Everybody in the green shades, that means good air quality all across Montana and northern Wyoming. We'll take a look at possible changes in all of that with the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Ed. The Billings Airport, one step closer to the start of construction on its terminal expansion project. Sletton Construction was approved as the project's general contractor and construction manager during Monday night city council meeting. The company will begin its work now to assist in the design phase and the project will go out for bids in the summer. Kevin Plone, director of aviation and transit, says a general contractor isn't usually needed this early in the game but it's a necessity due to the complexity of this project. It's really good to have them on board. What they'll start doing is starting to look at all the, what the design team has already put in place, start analyzing what can be built you know, easily and what can't be built easily, ask questions, get the architect to kind of think things through a little bit. Now the tarmac will also get a makeover thanks to a $300,000 grant from the Federal Aviation Administration. Heavy snowfall this past winter and the wet spring caused the tarmac's 20-year-old concrete to crack, which can obviously be dangerous to aircraft. The grant will allow the airport to do design work and construction will begin next year. In Montana's U.S. Senate race, outside groups are producing a number of a multiple TV ads going after Democrat incumbent John Tester. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison has done some fact checking on this wall of criticism. Which of these has voted against President Trump more than 60% of the time? All of them. The more you learn about the real John Tester, the more you realize he may look like Montana, but he votes like them. That's an ad from the National Republican Senatorial Committee which works to elect Republicans and defeat Democrats in U.S. Senate races across the country. The theme of these attacks? Democrat Tester is a closet liberal dedicated to opposing President Trump. Tester has opposed the President and the GOP on some key issues. He voted against the Republican tax cut bill last year, against repealing Obamacare, and against Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. But Congressional Quarterly, which tracks all votes in Congress, says Tester supported the president on 52% of votes where Trump took a position in 2017, more than many other Democrats did. And Trump also has signed into law 18 bills sponsored by Tester. Here's more similar charges. 
John Tester says he's a Montana moderate, but he turned liberal, voting with Nancy Pelosi for EPA regulations that hurt Montana farmers. Turn liberal with Bernie Sanders, voting to put illegal aliens over sick kids in Montana. That's from the Senate Reform Fund, a group yet to report the source of its $1.4 million in spending against Tester this summer. Tester did vote in 2015 and 2016 against lifting a new rule regulating water that many in agriculture opposed. The vote with Sanders was against a short-term budget deal this January that Tester said he opposed because a long-term fix was needed. And then there's this ad from the Club for Growth, a group big on tax cuts and less government. Tester promised not to take any lobbyist gifts or special interest paid travel, but Tester broke his promise and accepted expensive international travel, including a trip to Cancun. That Cancun trip? Tester and his wife went there on vacation in 2015 with fellow U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill, who invited them and paid for the trip. As for international travel, Tester did go to Israel in 2013 on a fact-finding mission, funded by a pro-Israel nonprofit group that has hosted numerous members of Congress. You'll be hearing this theme often. Tester, the liberal turncoat who can't be trusted. We'll be doing what we can this campaign season to report on his actual record, and you can decide for yourself how much of these charges are true, an exaggeration, or just plain false. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thanks, Mike. And you can see Mike Dennison's detailed analysis of these ads on our website, ktvq.com. Well, it's still, it may still be August, but it is time to sip into fall. Today, Starbucks announced the launch of its pumpkin spice lattes. So we sent Q2 Zoe Zandora out to talk with some local coffee shop owners to find out if this early launch is pushing them toward this trend. Pumpkin spice lattes, a staple item for some during the fall season. On August 28th, Starbucks launched the seasonal signature espresso and milk drink early. Even though it is still summertime, how will this affect local businesses? Will they follow the trend and spice up their life or stay true to the seasons? Owner of Rock Creek Coffee Roasters, Joel Gargaro, says because Starbucks is the market leader, they tend to follow what Starbucks is doing and give their customers what they want. The pumpkin spice, is, it's traditionally been a fall thing, even though it's not quite fall yet. But we're trying to you know, just hand, give our customers what they're asking for because they'll come in and ask for it. Because Starbucks has it, we, they'll come in and ask us, so we'd like to, to accommodate them. It's part of the trend of what's going on, so we want to stay where the trend is leading and be able to adjust what we need to based on our customers' needs, basically. Moab Coffee House owner Jeff Hosa says they don't even carry a pumpkin spice latte. We won't be doing anything soon. Like We do have our specialty drinks that we do that are seasonal. Um, we do a thing like the flannel shirt and the uh, pfeffer noose drink. And, that's kind of our renditions of some fall drinks, and we kind of try to wait till fall. We like to try to keep it, since we are local and everything like that, people are still, they come in and they want that, but without, with us saying, no, you know, we got still got about a month until we're gonna release that, kind of helps with that hype. And then when we do release that, we're gonna get a flood of people coming in. In Billings, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Zoe. Now, the price of a tall, regular vanilla latte, Zoe tells us, at Starbucks is $3.75, and the tall pumpkin spice latte runs $4.45. Coming up on tonight's Q2 530 News, the CDC says STDs are on the rise, and Montana health officials say it's the worst it's been in years. And in sports, Q2's Athlete of the Week is unstoppable right now at golf. Scott shows us how Carrie Carpenter is doing it. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.